Exchange-traded funds, or ETFs, are one of the most popular investment choices for beginners and experts alike. Because of the fund's adequate diversification, low expense ratio, low brokerage fees, and ample flexibility, ETFs are affordable and adaptable assets that would give your portfolio a decent one-up. Whether you're just starting out on investing or looking for other investments to diversify your portfolio and manage your risks, ETFs can suit you up to the occasion. Welcome to Luxo Life, your partner toward personal growth and success. Today's video is part one of our ETF investing series and also our very first series. So we've prepared and packed up a lot of helpful information in this video to get you as excited as we are. So grab a seat, stay tuned, and enjoy the video to the end. Let's begin! Think of ETFs as a basket, only this time you get more than just eggs. You have cans, jars, boxes, and packages of food and goods of all sorts of shapes and sizes. That's what an ETF is. It lets you diversify your investments with just one purchase. To better understand how ETFs work, we can compare them to other forms of investments that are already well known and understood. Starting with stocks. Like stocks, ETFs have minimum share prices that rise and fall as they are bought and sold every second, minute, and hour in the exchange market. But what separates ETFs from stocks is their innate diversification. More so, ETFs are passively managed and have fewer risks. With stocks, you buy a certain amount of shares from one single entity, but with ETFs, you gain access to shares across various entities with just one ETF. Although remember you buy the actual shares and securities and stocks, while you only buy shares within the ETF itself. However, you can still be eligible for dividend payouts and reinvestment benefits. You are also usually the one to manage and decide for your stocks when you're starting out, this is called active management, whereas you have the luxury of a more passive investment with ETFs and lower brokerage costs. On the other hand, these qualities make ETFs a bit more similar to mutual funds in which one investment holds shares across various holdings. While mutual funds are only redeemed at the end of the market day, ETFs are traded multiple times per day. You also have to know that mutual funds aren't bought and sold in the exchange market and are only bought via online brokers or from the fund managers themselves. ETFs are also professionally managed by the companies that offer them, so you don't have to stress yourself about how, when, and where to trade them. However, you do get the liberty to choose how, when, and where you will invest in ETFs, so you can position yourself in the market however you like and adjust to achieve your investment goals. ETFs tend to be more liquid and inexpensive than mutual funds, while mutual funds change marketing and admin fees, ETFs are often managed passively, even on the side of the fund manager, so they usually charge management fees for less or none at all. Going back to the basket illustration, ETFs can hold mixtures of investments from stocks, bonds, and commodities to different sectors of the economy. Each type of ETF has a different level of diversity. Some ETFs invest only in US-based shares while others offer global horizons. Some ETFs function to track and mimic index funds like the S&P 500 and the Dow Jones Industrial Average. We will cover the deeper aspects of the different types of ETFs in the next episode of this series. But now that you're well acquainted with what ETFs are, let's dive into what they can do for you and what you can do with them. These steps are not in any particular order, but the more you practice each step, the better you'll utilize ETFs and incorporate them into your portfolio. Number 1. Take Advantage of Diversification Natural diversification is the ETF superpower. The ability to benefit from shares in multiple companies with one cheap investment medium is an advantage to exploit. More so, you can adapt and manage your risks effectively with different types of ETFs. Some ETFs have holdings in hundreds or even thousands of stocks, while others, like the sector ETFs, are less diversified as they only track and invest in companies relevant to a particular sector. Index stock ETFs are those ETFs that offer the diversification of an index. One particular ETF of this sort is the first ETF itself 
the Standard & Poor's depository receipt that tracked the S&P 500. It is initially known as the SPY, a very fitting and rather humorous acronym to the nature of the fund. Today, however, it's more commonly known as the SPDR or SPIDER S&P 500 ETF Trust. One key difference that ETFs do have versus traditional index funds is that ETF prices bounce up and down during a trading day, while index fund prices are fixed and bartered only at the end of the trading day. Because of ETF's wide range of diversification, it's possible to invest in a large portion of the equity and fixed income markets with just a few different ETFs. Since they are low-cost and low-risk, ETFs are highly convenient and beneficial to your portfolio. Number 2. Invest consistently regardless of the fund's current state While other investors would tell you to buy low, there are advantages to buying units consistently with a fixed account you've set for yourself. As we've mentioned in previous videos, it's important to have a budget for investments if you want your money to start working for you. That fixed monthly budget can then be invested in your own chosen funds such as ETFs. Not only does this practice help you enforce discipline and consistency in your investment strategy, but it will also pay out well over the years. So learn to stick to a particular investment strategy and invest more consistently rather than stressing over when to buy and hold assets in ETFs and other markets. Number 3. Trade and Take Risks Despite ETFs usually being passive investments, you can also actively manage your funds to make the most out of them. Since most ETFs have lower risks and fees, they can serve as your training ground for getting into trading and making bets in the market. However, be warned that active fund management and trading do incur more expenses, but greater risks offer the potential for greater rewards. Active management involves asset allocation and trading, that is the buying and selling of units in hopes of outperforming your benchmark. While active fund management and trading would require a little bit more research, we strongly encourage you to learn the ins and outs of asset allocating and market trading so you won't only apply this knowledge to ETFs, but also give your other assets more attention and boost the possibility of greater returns. ETFs are very flexible investments, meaning that you can easily allocate and relocate your investments from one ETF to the next. For example, when you believe that the tech industry would be making a comeback while the automobile industry continues to decline, you can trade out of your position in the automobile sector and buy into ETFs that focus on the tech industry. You can do this at any point of the trading day and with minimal fees. More so, you aren't penalized for buying and selling ETFs rapidly while moving in and out of the market frequently. All of these qualities make ETF trading rather attractive and simple enough for beginners to get started with, and advanced traders can still benefit from ETF trading due to its friendly expense ratio, flexibility, availability, and manageable risks. Number 4. Utilize Inverse ETFs Inverse ETFs are designed to profit during stock declines. When you invest in inverse ETFs, you're essentially short-selling stocks. This means that you're selling borrowed stocks provided by ETFs that you expect will drop in value to repurchase them on a later set date. An inverse ETF is essentially a bet that a particular sector, market, or investment fund will decline in the future. Investing in inverse ETFs is in the advanced spectrum of ETF investing that may or may not benefit you during market crashes or recessions. They typically have higher expense ratios than traditional ETFs and are more involved with riskier investing strategies during market drops. However, when bought and positioned right, they make good hedging and profitability during such downtimes. A few key differences between inverse ETFs and short selling, however, are that inverse ETFs do not require margin accounts, in which investors would borrow money from brokers to trade and return a certain amount of the shares afterward. And inverse ETFs are safer and less expensive than short selling stocks. So inverse ETFs can also be the beginner's introduction to short selling or as a hedging option for more advanced traders. At first, ETFs may rather seem too complicated and full of rabbit holes, but ETFs are arguably one of the best investment options for beginners and experts alike. 
Their broad diversification, flexibility, adaptability, low costs, and low risks make ETFs a great addition to your portfolio and asset to achieve your financial goals. So, do you think ETFs are a worthwhile investment? Would you rather actively manage your investments or allow them to run their course as a passive investor? Tell us what you think in the comments and feel free to watch more of our awesome and educational videos. If you like this one, leave us a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel if you haven't yet. Be sure to click on the notification bell so you'd be the first to know when the next episode is out. That's it for this video and we'll see you next time.